Surface area of a sphere, we're at 11.4b, which is the second part of this lesson for 11.4. We have 10 previous videos for chapter 11 all about volume, and they're in the description in the geometry playlist if you become lost or confused. So right away for your notes, we have a formula. The surface area of a sphere with radius r is s for surface area is equal to 4 times pi times the radius squared. And in the last video, we learned about the volume of a sphere. If it has a radius r, its v for volume is equal to 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. The vertex of a pyramid is at the center of a sphere. We can also call that the, its apex of the pyramid, couldn't we? And the height of the pyramid is approximately the radius of the sphere. So it's not quite the radius because it has a flat bottom and the sphere is curved. So it's approximately the radius of the sphere. So imagine the entire sphere is filled with n pyramids, some number of pyramids that each have base area b and height r. I'm going to use our radius for the height now because we're approximating it. OK? The formula for the volume of a pyramid is one-third times base times height. And because we're using the radius for the height, we have one-third times base times radius. And the volume of a sphere is approximately the volume of these pyramids. The sphere's volume is close to the sum of the volumes of the pyramids. Formula for the volume of a sphere is four-thirds times pi times radius cubed. It's approximately the number of pyramids times one-third times the base times the radius, however many we have. We can divide both sides by one-third r for radius. There's four one-thirds in four-thirds, so we have a four here. Quotient rule, we're going to do radius cubed minus radius. It's going to give us radius squared, so we have 4 times pi times radius squared on this side. And on this side, the 1 third and the 1 third cancel out, and the r and the r cancel out, and we're left with the number of pyramids times their bases. If the pyramids fill the sphere, the total area of the bases is approximately equal to the surface area of the sphere s. So the surface area s is approximately 4 times pi times the radius squared. And as the number n of the pyramids increases, the approximation gets closer to the actual surface area. So imagine there's many of these pyramids inside of the sphere. In our last video, we learned that this is called the great circle, and it splits the sphere into hemispheres. The surface area of a sphere is four times the area of its great circle. So that's wonderful. If we know the area of the great circle, we can just multiply it by four and know the surface area of the sphere. The area of a circle is pi r squared. We multiply that by four, and for the surface area of the sphere, we have four pi r squared. We can find the surface area of a sphere and give our answer in terms of pi. In this diagram, it shows us the diameter is 10 meters. Well, the radius is half the diameter, so we know the radius must be 5 meters. We put that into our formula. We get a 25. We multiply the 4 times the 25 and get 100 pi meters squared for our surface area. We can find the volume of a sphere with surface area 144 pi meters squared. So it's giving us the surface area. We can substitute the 144 pi for s in our formula. We get 144 pi is equal to 4 pi r squared. We can solve for r and divide both sides by 4 pi. These pi's cancel out as a 1. 4 goes into 144 36 times. The 4 pi over 4 pi cancels out as a 1. We're left with radius squared. We can square both sides by removing this 2 exponent, put a radical sign around the 36, and we get the square root of 36, which is 6, is our radius. 
And now that we know the radius is 6, we can find the volume. We put that into our formula for r, for the radius. 6 cubed is 216. We can rewrite the whole thing as 4 times pi times 216 over this 3. 4 times 216 is 864. We have 864 pi over 3. And when we do the division, we get 288 pi meters cubed. So we were given the surface area. We used that to find the radius. And then we put the radius into the volume formula to find the volume. Now we have the surface area of a sphere with a great circle that has an area of 4 pi inches square. We can substitute the 4 pi for a in the formula for the area of a circle. We have pi r squared is equal to 4 pi. We solve for r, the radius. We can divide both sides by pi. That makes a 1. That makes a 1. We're left with the radius squared is equal to 4. We square both sides. We remove the 2, put a radical around this side, and we get that the radius is 2. We put that into our surface area formula, and we get 4 pi times 4, 4 times 4 is 16, and the surface area is 16 pi inches squared. We can explore the effects of changing dimensions if the radius of a sphere is tripled. In our diagram, it shows us the radius is 3 centimeters, so the volume for our original dimensions would be our 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. We put the 3 in for the radius and get 27 for 3 cubed. We can rewrite this as 4 times pi times 27 over 3. We can reduce this with the 3. There's 9 threes and 27, so we have 4 times pi times 9, which is 36 pi centimeters cubed. When the radius is tripled from 3 to a 9, we put the 9 in place of the 3. 9 cubed is 729. We can do 4 times pi times 729, which gives us 2,916 pi over 3, which on our calculators is 972 pi, and that's going to be centimeters cubed. For our original dimensions, we got a volume of 36 pi. When we tripled the radius, we got 972 pi. We can see 972 pi is equal to 27 times 36 pi. If the radius is tripled, the volume is multiplied by 27. Take a look at this diagram. We have a cone with a hemisphere on top. We can see the radius is 7 centimeters and the slant height of the cone is 25 centimeters. We can find the surface area and volume of a composite figure and then give our answer in terms of pi. So the first thing we're going to do is find the surface area of the hemisphere. The surface area of the hemisphere is going to be the, half the area of a sphere. So we're going to do half times 4 times pi times radius squared. Our radius is a 7. 7 times 7 is 49. That's going to give us 4 times 49, which is 196. Half times that is 98 pi centimeters squared. Now we need to find the surface area of the cone. We're going to use pi times the radius times the slant height. That's going to equal pi times 7 times 25. That's going to give us 175 pi centimeters squared. And the surface area of the composite figure is the sum of these two amounts. So we'd have 98 pi plus 175 pi, which is equal to 273 pi centimeters squared. Our answer is in terms of pi. But we're not done. We need to find the volume of the composite figure. To find the volume of this composite figure, we need to find the height of the cone. We know that the radius is a 7. We know the slant height is 25. We have a right triangle. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. We would have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, wouldn't we? We would need to find the b, which is going to be our h for height. We would have the height h is equal to the square root of 
the square 25 squared minus 7 squared. That's going to be the square of 625 minus 49, which is the square of 576. On our calculators, we get 24 centimeters for our height. The volume of the composite figure is the sum of the volumes of the hemisphere and cone. So for the volume of the hemisphere, we would have half the volume of a sphere, wouldn't we? So we have half times 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. If we know our radius is a 7, that's going to be 7 cubed. We can multiply the fractions and get 4 6, which simplifies to 2 thirds. Now we have 2 thirds pi times 343, that's what 7 cubed is. That means we have 686 over 3 pi centimeters cubed for the volume of the hemisphere. For the volume of the cone, we now know that the height is 24, so we're going to have 1 third times pi times the radius squared, which is a 7 squared, times the height, which is a 24. We can simplify this with the 3, reduce it with the 3, couldn't we? So there's 8 3's and 24. We have pi times 49 times 8. We were able to get rid of that fraction. 49 times 8 is 392, so we have 392 pi centimeters cubed. For the composite figure, we would add this volume to this volume. We'd get 1,862 pi over 3 centimeters cubed when we add them together. Now I know a lot of you know that volume has cubic units and area has square units. But when you're taking a test, if you accidentally put the wrong exponent, you could do all the work to find the volume and accidentally put a little 2 instead of a 3 exponent, and you could get it marked wrong. Or even with area, accidentally put a little 3 exponent for cubes instead of squares. So be very, very careful on your homework and your tests to make sure you have the correct exponent for cube units or square units. So now we're all finished with chapter 11 in volume, and we're going to move on to chapter 12, which is all about circles. And 12.1 is split into four parts. This one lesson has four parts. The first part, 12.1a, is going to be chord, secant, tangent. These are lines that intersect circles. It's going to be followed by 12.1b, pairs of circles, tangents, and theorems. 12.1c, construct tangent to a circle at a point. And then finally, 12.1d, circle graphs. As I always say, keep your formulas handy. I used to write mine on the inside cover of my spiral so I could just flip to it really quick. And now you know the surface area of a sphere is four times the area of its great circle. If you know the area of the circle, the great circle, you can just multiply that by four to get your surface area of the entire sphere. Hope you're doing well. Keep plugging away. Keep trying. And I'll see you in chapter 12. Bye.